Hello and welcome to the history of Stargate. Today's episode, the Gua'uld. And here we go. The Gua'uld are a race of sentient parasitic beings that take over hosts. Several species can serve as hosts, including humans and unasses. They originated on the planet designated P3X888. They are also extremely egomaniacal due to their genetic memory and the adverse mental effects of the sarcophagus technology. Gua'uld means God in the Gua'uld language. Races which will not serve them are completely destroyed, without compromise or mercy whatsoever. Although the majority of them are all one-dimensional, genocidal, megalomaniacal, and in some cases, apparently barely self-aware, there were a few exceptions. Apophis, at times, showed an unusual amount of insight, lucidity, and tendency for a Gua'uld, showing great resourcefulness in escaping from Sokar's imprisonment, which in turn allowed him to gain control over Sokar's forces and become a greater threat than before. Hero'ur was seen on the battlefield with his Jaffa as an active general, risking his own life alongside them rather than hiding behind them. Ball was also able to survive the demise of the rest of the system lords, though being infinitely more flexible and adaptable than any of the others had been, even at times allying with SG-1 when he felt the situation warranted it. For a Gua old gender appears to be a matter of choice, or persona, and is not always defined by the host. One example is Osiris occupying a female body. Gua olds appear to be able to express and feel love for their mate, or to a lesser extent, their children. However, the mating of two Gua'uld's creates a Harsesis, an individual who, through Gua'uld genetic memory, possesses all knowledge of the Gua'uld. With all the knowledge, a Harsesis could easily jeopardize the Gua'uld's power structure by simply sharing the fact that they are all not gods, and how their technology worked. For this reason, producing a Harsesis was an unspoken taboo among the Gua'uld, and if known to exist, were hunted down and killed with impunity. The Gua'ulds first arose in the waters of P3X888, originally as predators. Eventually, they began taking the native Unas as hosts, becoming more adaptive. They eventually learned how to operate the Stargate the Ancients placed on P3X888 and left taking Unas slave armies with them. Under the leadership of Atak, the Gua'ulds developed the first of their society as conquerors, stealing ancient technology and adapting it for their purposes. In 22,000 BC, Atak was killed by his son Epep, and he reordered the leadership of the Gua'ulds. Epep shared power among his underlings, Ra, Nut, and Throth. However, around 17,800 BC, another Gua'uld began to rise in power, Anubis. Apep's powers began to decline in this time, and Anubis gained more power. Anubis then killed Apep, devouring the symbiote before the eyes of the Gua'uld. However, Ra managed to rally the others in Apep's name. After three centuries of civil war, Anubis was defeated and exiled. Ra organized a new leadership called the High Council of the System Lords. Ra installed himself as Supreme System Lord of the Gua'uld Empire and took the Gua'uld Queens, Hathor and Igira as mates. Around 10,500 BC, Ra discovered a healthy world with a primitive race, humans. Reseeded by the ancients before they left Earth, Ra took a young native as host. Revitalized, Ra began allowing other System Lords access to the Tari. Some were used as worshippers and slaves in Naquita mines. Others were taken to Dakara and turned into genetically altered slave soldiers called the Jaffa to serve as warriors and incubators for larval Gua'ulds. A rebellion in 2995 BC ended the Gua'ulds' dominion on Earth, but humans had already been seated throughout the Gua'uld Empire, so Ra felt no need to reconquer the planet. However, according to Kali, after Ra solidified his rule in ancient Egypt, he sent out invitations to other system lords that they are allowed to lay a claim of dominion on Earth, subservient to Ra. At this time, the Gua'uld still used Unas's as host until Ra switched hosts with his Lotar, 
the young native boy, who did not flee at Ra's Hatak landing. He immediately decreed that all Guaulds will take humans as their new hosts. Within a year, many heeded Ra's decree. Some like Hathor even began experimenting and creating the first Jaffa soldiers. Others like Kronos and Shiva secretly rejected the idea of taking a lesser host, making excuses when questioned by Ra. Soon, however, Ngira began to have doubts about the future of the Gua'uld and their cruel destructive ways. Surring a legion of Primta, she in turn named them the Tok'ra, the resistance against Ra. The Supreme System Lord discovered Ngera's treachery, dispatched a force and captured her, removing her host and placing her in a stasis jar on Pangera. In 1996 AD, the Tari reopened the Stargate and sent a team through to Abydos. Ra captured some of them and found a nuclear warhead that Colonel Jack O'Neill had been given in case he found any threats. Ra enriched the device with Naquita and prepared to send it through to Earth. But Dr. Daniel Jackson had told the Abedonians about the truth of Ra. The Abedonians rebelled and Ra was forced to flee the planet. However, O'Neill and Jackson killed Ra by ringing the primed bomb aboard Ra's vessel as it was taking off thus evading the orders to destroy the Abedonian Stargate and its surrounding population. The Reign of Apophis After the death of Ra, the system lords warred among themselves to replace him. Eventually, Croesus, Heroer, and Baal came out stronger than before, but the dominant system lord was Apophis. During a mission to find new hosts, the newly created SG-1 met Tilk of Chulak, Apophis's first prime who later joined the Tauri, and eventually SG-1. Teal'c having long grown disillusioned with Apophis while still eager to free his people, the Jaffa, from slavery at the hands of the Gua'uld. After SG-1 caused various setbacks for him, Apophis in turn launched an attack on Earth. However, SG-1 was able to get aboard Corel's Hatak and sabotage both it and Apophis's Hatak. Apophis and Corel survived but Apophis' position among the Gua'ulds was severely weakened. Under assault from Heroer and Sokar, Apophis was eventually captured by Sokar and sent to Netyu. When SG-1 arrived to rescue Jacob Carter, Apophis launched a rebellion and escaped Netyu just before the Tok'ra destroyed it. Apophis soon took control of Sokar's forces and then Heroer's after an aborted alliance. After the death of Croesus, Apophis took his fleet to destroy the Tok'ra on Borash. Major Samantha Carter came up with a plan to destroy Apophis' fleet by causing Borash's son to explode. The plan worked, but caused SG-1's Hatak to be sent to another galaxy, along with Apophis' mothership. The replicators soon infested Apophis' ship, and Apophis took over SG-1's mothership, but it too became infested with replicators. SG-1 sabotaged the vessel, causing it to crash into Delmac. Apophis was aboard the Hatak at the time and was killed in the crash. His body was presumably destroyed beyond repair in the crash. But it wasn't. The Return and Reign of Anubis With the three dominant system lords dead, fierce infighting began amongst the remaining system lords. However, they also began to experience a new threat among themselves, as one enemy attacked using only ships, never with Jaffa. The system lords eventually called the High Council to deal with the issue. The recently returned Osiris also arrived, revealing the identity of their enemy, Anubis. Osiris gave the others two options, restore Anubis to the state of system lord, or place themselves at the mercy of Anubis. Despite the objections of Lord Yu, Anubis was restored to his former status. What they didn't know was that Anubis had achieved ascension, only to be cast back down by the others. This left him unable to use significant powers, but he still had a great deal of knowledge of ancient technology. However, Anubis was unable to use any knowledge previously unobtainable to him, as a Gua'uld. Within a matter of months, Anubis began a series of attacks against the Tari, the Tok'ra, and the Asgard. Using his knowledge gained from Ascension, he was able to capture the Asgard Thor and extract some knowledge of Asgard technology, which included holographic technology and beaming, which would become available to the other Gua'uld. He also developed a new mothership capable of destroying a planet. 
Lord Yu, at first, waged a one-man war against Anubis, but eventually managed to rally the other system lords into a united alliance of system lords. However, Yu's powers and mental stability, because of his old age, began to decline, and Baal took over the leadership of the system lords. Sensing the growth of dissent amongst the Jaffa due to the actions of Teal'c and Braytak, Anubis created a new foot soldier called the Cull. They had energy-absorbing armor, increased strength, and were utterly loyal to Anubis. The Tari and the Tok'ro were able to make a weapon that could kill a Kroll with the ancient healing device, but Anubis now dominated the System Lords. Fearing that the Tari may have gained ancient weaponry, Anubis launched a full-scale invasion of Earth, using over 30 Hataks and his super mothership. However, SG-1 discovered the Arctic outpost left behind when Atlantis set off for the Pegasus Galaxy. Using drone weapons, they destroyed Anubis' ship and his fleet, presumably killing Anubis as well. However, he did survive due to his non-corporeal state, but the aftermath of the battle was devastating for Anubis. The Reign of Baal the defeat of Anubis caused a massive power vacuum among the system lords. In order to avoid open war, they agreed to divide the territories among themselves evenly. However, Baal managed to discover Tartarus and imprint his own will on the Kull, using them and the ships that Anubis left behind. Baal began conquering the system lords and absorbing their territories. Basset and Olakin were killed. Morgan surrendered, Ares fleed but was killed by Brigadier General Jack O'Neill, and Moloch was killed by the Tauri. Camulus sought asylum among the Tauri but was ultimately sent to Baal and presumed killed. Yu and his associate prepared an offensive but were defeated. What no one knew was that Anubis had returned and was using Baal as an unwilling puppet. Eventually, the replicators began a full-scale invasion of the Milky Way coming into conflict with the Gua'uld Empire. Most of the system lords, such as you, were killed, with Baal being the only apparent survivor. Many among the rebel Jaffa returned to Baal, believing that the replicators to be a divine punishment. Teal'c and the remaining rebels launched an attack on Takara, and Jacob Carter discovered that the Takara superweapon could be used to destroy the replicators. Jacob, Lieutenant Colonel Samantha Carter, and Ball agreed to reprogram the device and use it to destroy the replicators. The plan worked, but the rebel Jaffa were able to take Ball's talk, forcing him to flee. The remaining Jaffa rebelled en masse. Anubis attempted to retake Takara to use the weapon to destroy all life in the Milky Way. However, Oma Dasala, who had helped Anubis ascend, chose to battle with him for all eternity, preventing Oma from helping others to ascend, but also ceasing Anubis' interference on the lower planes. Bereft of power and a fugitive of the free Jaffa nation, Baal fled to Earth and took control of the trust. To throw off the free Jaffa, Baal created a series of clones and allowed one of them to be captured and killed by Greyak. Ball also attempted a new plan of conquest by stealing Stargates and cutting them off from the rest of the network. He intended to activate the Dakar superweapon, destroying all life in the galaxy and causing the Ori, who had recently learned of human life in the Milky Way, to subsequently lose interest in the galaxy. SG-1 sabotaged his efforts. Eventually, Ball learned of the Song Grail, desiring a weapon that could neutralize the Ancients and the Ori. Ball began searching for the Sand Grail. He was forced to work with SG-1 and Adria, the leader of the Ori army. However, the Ori found the planet they were on and took the Sand Grail. SG-1 later sent it through to the Alteran galaxy. Hoping to end the Ori invasion, Ball captured Adria and took her as a host. He also killed his clones, hoping to cover his tracks. Lieutenant Colonel Cameron Mitchell killed Ball during the capture of Adira and the symbiote placed in her was soon removed. However, Mitchell expressed doubt over whether Ball was finally dead, fearing that one or more of Ball's clones may have survived. Ultimately, the last of Ball's clones was captured and extracted, only for the clone to claim prior to his extraction that the original Ball had a contingency plan. Just then, the real Ball uses a solar flare in conjunction with the Stargate to travel back in time to prevent the Earth Stargate from getting to America by sinking the ship that was taking it to America in 1938. 
thereby changing the present. Using his foreknowledge, Baal then rose to the highest level in the renewed Gual Empire, bringing a massive fleet to conquer Earth, with Quetesh as his queen and Teal'c as his first prime. Though all of the system lords wished to obliterate Earth from the face of the universe, Baal decided to treat them mercifully. This got Katesh suspicious and forced Baal to reveal the location of his monitoring base before she killed him. Fortunately, the remaining members of SG-1 who had escaped the altercations to history thanks to them traveling through the Stargate at the moment that history finished changing in the aftermath of Baal's modifications allied with Teal'c and traveled to Ball's monitoring station. Using the Stargate and a convenient solar flare to send Colonel Cameron Mitchell back in time to 1929, allowing him to get into position to board the transport ship and kill Ball before he destroyed history. With the real Ball dead, the extraction went uninterrupted. The Ball symbiote died from the extraction while the host survived. With the death of the real Ball and his last remaining clone, the last remaining Gowald system lord was dead, and the Empire had fallen. Hey, thank you for watching the history of Stargate. Special thanks to the Stargate Wiki and all contributors for all information you heard today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you can. If you have, thank you, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.